I'm Erica, and I'm a landlord. Kinda. Technically, I own this house, but I can't afford to actually sleep in it. So, that's how this got built. Technically, I live in this, uh, this little structure that I built here on the bike path on city property. The really convenient thing is that when my grandparents had the house built, it was the perfect location on the bike path. So now that it's constitutional to sleep on public property, I said, all right, well, I know how to solve this problem. I'll just sleep on the bike path and rent out my bedroom so that I can afford to, well, rent out my bedroom and the rest of the whole apartment so that I can afford to keep the house. I am the fourth generation to live here. My grandmother and my grandfather built the place in 1963. And my great grandmother lived in the mother-in-law apartment. Love it here in Burlington. It's beautiful, family all from here. But there have been a lot of changes over the last few years that have made it a lot harder to, to be landlords here. What kind of changes? Uh, well, tax increases for one thing. Tax increase after tax increase after tax increase. It's literally like every single time you turn around or sneeze, the taxes are increased. It's like rabbits. All of a sudden we just get a notification that there's new taxes or some new regulation or some new thing that they're gonna make us do. This is my favorite. There is this program from Efficiency Vermont. They do this test and they can test where you need to upgrade your insulation or if you need a new furnace and all this stuff. Oh, so I was like, sure. $16,000 worth of renovations. They recommended $200 a year in savings on our gas bill. The whole house, 80 years to recoup the cost of those they're trying to make that a permanent requirement for landlords to do. I'll be dead when those savings are realized. You're welcome, granddaughter. Here's the deal. I'm a resourceful person and um, I don't take things lying down. So I said, you know what? I'm just gonna live on the bike path. It's totally legal to live on public property. Last year we had to do some renovations for safety, you know, put a little stair under a window, add some railings down into the basement, stuff like that. And we had a bunch of scrap wood left over. So I built my lovely, lovely structure here. Look at, you got all this, got all this air right here, living, got the grass out there, getting the phytonutrients from the, you know, getting grounded really close to mother earth. I, I mean, in, I mean, I'm, as close to Mother Earth as I could be without actually being on the Earth. So, you know, it's just, it's a great way to remember where we come from and get back to our roots. In addition to the extra money we're making off renting out the whole house, I've come up with some other ways to make a little extra money off of this beast here. I'm real entrepreneurial, right? I told you I thought I could make some different money, some extra money. Can you picture your business advertised right here? Huh? Huh? Right here on the bike path for everybody to see? Perfect money. That's what I'm talking about. Boom. I sleep out here, hang out out here. The Wi Fi signal's really good so I can do my workout here even. And I just shower in the bathroom in the basement and hang out. Why don't you uh, just live in the basement? Oh, <laughs> you think that I could do that, but there's these silly rules that the ceiling has to be a certain height. It's crazy. So I use the bathroom down here, which is great. The bathroom was built you know, years ago when my grandparents still live here, but uh, it has to be a direct vent furnace. So we gotta make it all go out the out this window instead of the chimney. And so it's basically just like, yeah, you have this whole huge basement with multiple doors and windows, but you can't use it anyway because... And the fire marshal came for an, an inspection 
And he said, and he freaked out. He totally freaked out. He actually got really mad at me. He was like, you can't live down here. And uh, yeah, there's two doors and three windows. The windows aren't big enough. And the doors are not windows. And therefore, they are not included as forms of egress. So, therefore, ergo, I'm not allowed to sleep down there. So my grandparents actually built the basement to be extra bedrooms. So you used to be able to sleep down there. The ceiling height is an issue. The egress is an issue. And then we would have to buy a new furnace. There's just not really a way to live in the basement. I don't think I'd want to anyway. We've got a tenant that's awful. Susan. She's awful. So uh, my grandparents had that gazebo built and they even had a horse and chickens, and goats out here. Who's that? Susan. So uh, why do you dislike this Susan person so much? Let's start with she hasn't paid rent in three months and I'm trying to evict her and I can't. They make the process really, really hard here. Even when people aren't paying rent or destroying property or whatever, my tenants have more rights to my property than I do. I've considered becoming a tenant of myself, hoping that maybe that would give me rights to my property more since my tenants seem to have more. But then I was told by my lawyer I couldn't do that. But yeah, they're actually even trying to get rid of no fault uh, evictions. They make it sound bad, no fault eviction, but you know, I own this house. Yeah. Long day landlording, fixing stuff, putting stuff in a way, making sure things are safe for my tenants. So I'm gonna kick back, catch me a pigeon or two, eat some dinner, and uh, you know, roll out my mat here, get a good night's sleep. And um, that's homeless landlord living. <laughs> <laughs>